Let's call the meeting to order at 5.35. We'll round up. All right. So. All right, can I borrow that real quick? It's not pulling up in mine. All right, so we'll start with um, starting now per RSA 189.74. If anybody has any public input throughout the meeting, just raise your hand, let us know. Uh, any things along those lines. Uh, is there any announcements that anybody has? No announcement, but a question or an ask if there's any way we could move the agenda around and do the principal reports first so that the teachers here to present could present and yes. then we could get into the budget and financial talks. Absolutely. <clears throat> Great. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, so, believe it or not, our uh, winter reporting period, uh, report card period, is almost here, which is amazing. Our semester one ends, barring any snow days, um, right? Barring any snow days, ends on uh, January 19th. And uh, our Alma progress reports will be sent electronically to families on uh, January 26th. A quick facilities update. Uh, the three of us met, Andy and, and, and Renee and I met last week, really to update uh, the board on the roof. Uh, everything is ready to roll, we are scheduled um, barring any weather delays for the weekend, uh, sorry, the week of April break, um, it'll be it'll take uh, around three days for them to complete the work, and there will be no students in the building, so it should not affect anything um, while we're on break. Our current enrollment numbers are continue to stay at 118, uh, 20 in kindergarten, 23 in first grade, 23 in second grade, 12 in third grade, 21 in fourth grade, and 19 in fifth grade. Uh, community events, uh, we are excited that um, our students finally found out uh, back in November and auditioned for and now rehearsing for the Lion King uh, kids. Uh, the official dates now um, are March 22nd and 23rd. Um, we also have uh, Paige Tool, our school counselor here today. As I said, um, we've been working uh, for now three years on our MTS work. And uh, for that first year um, was really our MTSS Tier 1 team prepping for year number two, which year number two was last year, and we just focused on Tier 1 supports academically, behaviorally, socially, emotionally for all of our students. And the plan was for uh, us to branch off into the Tier 2, Tier 3 area, and Paige um, has taken over facilitating uh, that area and that team. So she is here today to do a wonderful presentation on what MTSS Tier 2 and 3 look like here at school and uh, some of the changes that we've made uh, that are going to um, uh, hopefully better explain what it really looks like here and what interventions look like here and what the team looks like here. So Paige, take it away. Thank you. Um, so again, I'm Paige Cole. I'm the school counselor. I, I want to share with you just yes. this system that we've had in place pretty much all along that I've been here and many years before that, um, the multi-tiered systems of support. And this team used to be called by another name, but um, over the summer we did some work and um, rebranded, I guess, and um, came up with a support system, a process, resources for our teachers to help our students. Um, so in this presentation, shouldn't take too long, it's a quick overview, um, but the things that I'll go over is just what MTSS is, um, what exactly is involved in our student teacher assistance team, um, breaking down what would happen in each tier, and then also the stat process, um, what that would look like step by step. So to begin with, just an overview of MTSS. Like I said, it's something that we've had in place for a while. Um, as we've started rolling it out and calling it STAT, there are some questions and you know it's something that's always been there, but now with a new name and a more clear, um, open approach, we're communicating with families and being consistent with how we're following through um, in that communication. So MTSS is 
basically a whole child approach. It's equity in our schools. It's how we make sure that every student gets what they need. And it's not just academics. It would be in many different areas. So, um, you know, academics would be math, literacy, um, if a student is uh, an English language learner. But we also look at their attendance. Are they coming to school on time? Are they getting here consistently? Um, what are their social and emotional and behavioral skills looking like? How does that impact them in the classroom and making friends and how they're communicating with other kids? Um, and speaking of communication, we also look at speech and language. How is a student able to express themselves? What are they taking in? Um, if there's any sort of auditory processing, we could look at that as well. Um, we talk about health and wellness, if there are certain chronic illnesses that are affecting students, um, if there are hygiene issues that are coming up that we can help them with, things that would affect them throughout the day, we want to be able to support that as well. Um, and also occupational therapy, that would be things like handwriting or coordination, um, you know, how they process their environment and um, executive functioning skills can also be under OT, but also under SEL and lots of different areas as well. Um, looking at specifically our student teacher assistance team, so we call it STAT, and um, the name is kind of you know coming from the phrase of STAT, like you know getting to something quickly. We want to make sure that we're addressing student needs, and we're also making sure that we're supporting the student for sure, but also the teacher and the staff that are involved in the process. So our intervention team utilizes the experience of all the team members. We create, we meet, we create a plan, um, follow through on that plan. It's tailored to the needs of the student and making sure that the staff are equipped to um, support that student on the plan. And as I said, all those areas of MTSS that we can support areas of need, it's how we support through the staff process too. So whatever they're struggling with, whatever they have concerns around, whatever they have a lack of skill, we will talk about it, figure out a plan, and execute it. Again, STAT is more than just supporting the student. Of course, the student is our priority, but we want to make sure that the staff, the teachers, are feeling comfortable and confident in these plans that we're creating for them. We want to make sure that they're actually possible, so that if they're struggling with something, a staff member, any staff member, can make a referral. That's something that we saw that was a barrier is, you know, a student might be performing well in one area of the building, but then maybe in a UA or in a different area, recess, lunch, in those social skill areas, there might be a deficit that a different teacher is seeing. So any staff member can make that connection and can make that referral so that we can get students and teachers, any staff, the support that they need with helping students. So pretty much everybody is a staff member. So all students or all staff are responsible for supporting students and they're an active role in the process. The classroom teacher is the point person. They're the ones that will you know, reach out to the parent or guardian and let them know that we're starting this process, um, giving them updates throughout the way of you know, what's happening, what the plans are, um, what's the data showing and any next steps. And then the parents are part of the process in supporting and advocating for their student. However, since our staff meetings are a general meeting part of our every school, like just regular schedule, um, parents and guardians are part of the meeting. However, they can always call for a meeting and a conference with that teacher um, and any other team members. Um, the staff coordinator, that's myself. So I am the one that you know gets the referrals from the teachers. Um, I help them with the process. Um, make sure that all the people are at the table that need to be to talk about that student. Our principal, the administrator, just oversees the process and making sure that we're you know, doing all the right things, communicating in the right way. Um, and then the interventionist, that's all of those people with their areas of expertise that are coming to the table and um, executing that plan. The different tiers of MTSS, we have tier one, that's the bottom of the triangle. So that would be the hope 
is that all students would be successful at this area, but we can see that about 80 to 90 percent tend to be successful and that other students might need those tier two or tier three supports. Um, but tier one means universal. Everybody gets what's happening in tier one. Everyone has access to it. And then tier two, um, the goal of the MTSS system is that about five to 10% would be receiving tier two services or um, it would basically be supplementary targeted interventions. Um, and I'll get into what that might look like, some examples. Um, tier three is more intensive, it's individualized, it's still in intervals, about a six to eight week process each time. And then at the top would be special ed. So there's a bit of a differentiation between those tiers and then special ed <coughs> would be more in, um, limited. Um, it's specialized, it's long term, you know, IEPs over three, three years to evaluate it. Um, academic supports, this is just examples of what it might look like at each tier. So like I said, tier one is something that all students have access to. Um, tier two might be a smaller group or more individualized support. Um, tier three could be a more intensive instruction, it could be more frequent. Um, they might end up with an individual plan at that point. And then special ed would be a different process being referred to special education evaluation, um, and if they qualify, they would receive an IEP. And again, examples of what uh, social emotional learning supports would look like. Tier one, we have our MTSSB, so that's multi tiered system of support for behavior. Um, we have um, our cool expectations, the King Fisher expectations we love. We have um, the cool down corner in every single space in the building. Um, we use second step as our SEL curriculum. Tier two would be supplementary small groups, maybe individual sessions with a student. Tier three, again, more intensive, more frequent, and an individual plan might come up in that area. And then again, a student could receive SEL supports through a special education plan. Behavior supports. Similar to SEL, but a little bit different. Um, tier one, we have the expectations for everybody. We have cool cards to help with positive reinforcement. Um, tier two would be potentially a behavior plan supporting students with specific strategies, strategies and tools. Um, tier three, again, more uh, an intensive behavior plan. Um, an individual plan um, might be um, more than just that particular area of the cool expectations and might go beyond that. Um, and then again, the student would receive behavior supports, BCBA supports through the IEP. OT, just some examples. All students in tier one receive the proper seating or working on getting the proper seating for everybody. Um, they may have access to fidgets, to the cool down corner tools, headphones, um, lots of our classrooms use the zones of regulation. Um, tier two would be more so the OT, the occupational therapist, consulting with that classroom of their specific needs. Could be small groups or individualized work. Again, tier three, more frequent, more individualized, but the special education plan would be OT services, pull-out services, push-in services, um, to really tackle what their area of need is. Speech and language supports, all of our classrooms have the Red Cat audio system, a little microphone, um, so it helps the teacher with communication clearly, and as well for the students um, to hear them. Tier two, it might be screenings, it might be small groups. Tier three, again, that theme of it's more intensive, it's um, you know, more individual, but special education plan would become that specialized instruction, um, having the supports with the speech and language uh, services and any other accommodation they might need. I know this is repetitive in each area. It's hard to get into the nitty gritty, but generally this is what we see. And same thing with health and wellness supports. We can, all students have access to the health office, but 
but if there is a need that's coming up, there might be an individual plan or individual consult consultation between the nurse and that teaching staff um, to make sure they're getting what they need. Um, in the special ed area, there may be a health plan if it's applicable or screenings that they support with in the um, evaluation process. Okay. As I said before, we're making sure that we're really transparent with our teachers, with our staff, with our families about what the referral process looks like. I won't read all of this for you, um, but this is something new and different than what we've had before so that teachers know exactly where to start and where to go based on what's happening. So if they have a student that is still having concerns despite the tier one services and supports that are already in place for them, you want to compare, is it different? Is it more significant than other students? Have they tried things? Have they gathered data? Are they still not seeming to work with what that teacher has in their own toolbox? And then if not, then they would um, push forward to a staff referral so we can all meet together, talk about how we can support that student, support the teacher. There's also an intervention process for the team members of STAT. So when we come together, what that looks like, um, we meet every six to eight weeks to talk about the plan, to communicate updates, to take data, to keep data, um, just constantly in communication with each other. Um, and then last but not least, the intervention process um, for families of students, what they can expect. So they would be in communication with the classroom teacher. The stat referral shouldn't be a surprise. You know, the parents should be aware of the concerns that have been going on and there should be an open dialogue leading up until that point. And then the classroom teacher is that point person to just let the family know what's going on, what we're doing. Parents have the option to opt out if they would prefer their student to not participate in a plan. Um, and like I said, the parents aren't directly involved in the meetings, however, can always request a meeting if they want to have um, more information and more of a dialogue with the team members. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I know it's a lot, and um, but we're really excited about it. We feel like this transparency, this openness, and this really clear system is gonna benefit our students and our teachers. Any questions? What do you do if a parent is uncooperative? That's their right. We try to meet with them, um, help them understand the reason why a teacher might have a concern. It's a judgment free, so we're not, there's no blame on the parents for any reason why we would make a referral. And sometimes that helps, sometimes bringing them in, um, showing them examples of work and why we're concerned. And we just, honestly, we just keep the lines of communication open. But if they really don't want us to move forward, we try to respect that. So if you have a child with a behavior issue, mm -hmm. for example, that they were not in the classroom, and you decided to use this process, well, there's still the parents didn't agree. What, what do you do with that? Problem? Well, the parents would have to agree to an intervention that pulled them out of their classroom and put them in an alternative learning environment for a period of time. The parents doesn't necessarily have to agree with um, um, student code of conduct or, or expectations for East Kingston students. So, you know, if a classroom teacher has a certain level of expectations and they respond to a behavior in a certain way, they don't need parents' permission to create that sense of community in the classroom. If the behavior is rising to the point where Paige is getting called off a lot, there's going to be a conversation home with the parents to sort of talk about what we can do and sort of what we can agree on and not agree on and how we respond to certain behaviors. Because remember, we have to keep all the kids in the classroom yeah. safe. So in that sense, parents don't have, they can't say, well, I don't, I don't want you to ever blank if it's about keeping the rest of the kids in the classroom safe. So it's, a, it's, a, it's really just helping parents understand that. The parent's permission really comes out, I want to pull them out for six weeks to go to the reading lab to do some intention, intensive phonological awareness. They're going to leave their classroom. They're going to go get this intensive intervention. That's really where parents are like, I don't want them to ever leave their classroom. I'm not comfortable with that. that that's kind of where the rubber hits the road. When it comes to responding to behaviors, 
it's a, the school has a little bit more discretion around that piece, if that makes sense. But always inform the parents. We always want to be communicating with parents either way. Excellent, Paige, thank you. I have a question, like how long would a student be in each stage? Like when do they move on? I just wanted to get the... I think what we usually try, I guess that's one part I didn't talk about, <laughs> um, but we, when we have a student in a tier two or tier three intervention, <clears throat> we usually do at least two or three rounds of intervention and a round would be about six to eight weeks. So within that plan, it could be, you know, they're receiving reading intervention for X amount of times, X amount of minutes, um, and we just make sure that we're consistent with that plan. Every single round, we're meeting as a team and just looking at the data and seeing if there's improvements. Um, and after a few rounds, it may be, the, the decision may be made that either they're making some progress, we'll continue in this direction, or we might need some more information on how to support them, and it could be, a referral to a special education evaluation. Okay. Or they would go back into the regular classroom. Yep. Yeah, so if they're if they're <coughs> successful and we've seen that from some, you know, intensive supplementary supports that they are making improvements, then it may be um, that they don't need those tier two or tier three interventions anymore. Cool. I think the biggest thing to take away from the MTSS um, work that SEU sixteen is doing is Decisions should really be made on the student's data and their in their response. And sometimes it's, are we collecting the correct data? Are there are we in the correct intervention? So sometimes before we even move or decide we're going to go from tier two to three, we're going to have those types of conversations. So um, try to move away from like thinking of, well, we we did inter interventions for six weeks. Now we have to go to special ed. Well, no, because your intervention is working really well, and actually you've pigeoned whole an area that the student didn't get exposed to for a variety of reasons and it's working. Um, so that's really, it's really about the questions you're asking and the data you're, you're collecting and analyzing when you move up the tiers. It's going to be more intensive data, more intensive analysis of the student's behaviors, learning behaviors, math, reading, and those pieces. And then if you address those, did the student learn them? Are they making progress? So I think that's really the, the thing we want to think about. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I've got a question. <clears throat> Does, this might be hard to answer, but is it generally pretty close to what tier a majority of students are in compared to like the state evaluations that we're getting where we're at meets or exceeds <laughs> where we're starting to see that expand and starting to see some of the um, I don't know if, we, if you correlated that with your new MTS tiers. I would, I would say the tiers do not match with the percentage of students ident identified in special ed. So, okay. like, tier three really is your 5% five, five of your population. Mm -hmm. You have more than 5% of your students identified with special education. Special education goes through all tiers depending on the student. Okay. Um, but I, I don't know if we've cross-referenced it to the proficiency data from the SAS, but that would be an interesting activity to think about. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, so we've done announcements, chair's reports. No, principal's reports, not chair report. Uh, let's, we have no more announcements. Making sure. Okay. Uh, let's go to business and financials. Molly. Michelle read the manifest. If you want to those to them. Um, before we dive into the budget, we also brought the current year financial in your board pack. Um, there was a large expense added, but that was for the roof. Um, so I know there is discussion on if we want to use the trust fund, but we're not talking to it yet. So will see that expense on the report. Actually, Molly, we made a motion at the last meeting Sorry. to... To take it out, but to, I, oh, I to, thought you were going to do it at the end if only if you needed it, or are you definitely going to take it out? We made a motion to... Because we wanted to get it started sooner rather than later. So, we, I mean, we can start it. It's just showing as an expense here, just like how we did last year with the special um, tuition. We got it started and it shows an expense because we have to expend the money and then we ask the trust for it back. Okay. But you can't 
send it back to the trust. So at the end of the year, if you have a large fund balance, you can't then send it back. Okay. So I was thinking that you wanted to wait to see how much you really wanted to draw it down on the trust because if you do have a fund balance, then you might not want to take as much out of the trust. Yeah. I think that's true. That yeah. That, that the, was the plan to see yeah. where we were. Yeah. The, so the overall goal of it was <coughs> next year's budget. Correct. We wanted, we wanted that to yeah. not be reflected in it. Right. Correct. And so if, if we can get away with not using the trust and still have it covered, is it what you're talking about, right? Correct. Okay. okay. So either way, if we have access, we use it to cover. If not, we'll Correct. dig into the we trust. Correct. We only ask for the balance in the trust that we don't have. Okay. Okay. That that's the okay. overall goal that we all talked about, right? Um, I didn't interpret it that way. I interpreted it that we are going to ask for like the full amount, and then if we have leftover money, that would just go offset the tax rate, and it would just stay as is. It will offset the tax rate if you have extra money at the end of the year. Yeah, so you're But you can't send it back to the trust. <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't. I thought we were using the sergeant trust because it was like a safety issue. So that money is available for that. So that's what I thought we left it at. And sorry, in the last meeting I had COVID, so I wasn't here. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You were not so, here. Right. Michelle was here. So Michelle stood in, so I wasn't yeah. here because I was okay. really yeah. sick at home. <laughs> yeah, so that's the way I. Is that correct, Michelle? I mean, we can do it either way. I mean, right. we, we so have to. You know. I thought we were. I thought we were using the sergeant trust to pay for the roof. Once we figured out what the buzz, budget was, because we didn't want to use our money. We definitely didn't want to put in next year's budget. Correct. Right. Correct. And we and there is a need to have it done yeah. immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought we were expending the funds from the sergeant fund to pay for the roof, but it's, but this is a decision the board makes, not me. But that is, uh, that's yeah. what I thought. But yeah, that's what I thought. And um, Andy had made the motion because so, of the way we had to do it. So yeah. let's let's talk about the two different ways that we do it. If we take take it out of the full trust now, and we have excess, we can just send that back to the taxpayers. So if you pay well, so if you pay for the roof now, that's going to cover what's the cost of the roof. But if you end up in a sizable fund balance at the end of the year, that would go to offset the tax rate. The the plan is for it to be done at the last week in, in April. Mm -hmm. So I, I think by that time we'll have a really good idea on what Correct. the fund balance looks like. So it, line, it, it lines up really well. Yeah. with what, what could potentially be in the fund balance or taking the full amount out of the trust. So either way, either way, if you take the full amount of the trust or not the full amount of the trust, it's not next year's budget, it's in this year's budget. Mm -hmm. okay. It's just, when do you want to draw down on the trust? Do you want to do it now and take the whole roof out or do you want to wait a little while? You're still going to pay for it. You've already paid part of it. That's why you see the actuals in here. And let's just say you have savings on other areas that you didn't expect savings on. You don't have to take the full amount out of the trust. You can preserve that in the trust. It's up, it's up to you. I like to keep the accounting like tighter and like all separated so that we can see like year after year like what we're sending back. Uh, so if we're using that for like a roof, it's not really a true number of what we've saved because then that will help us project what we need to budget like moving forward. So. Either way, I'm happy to do it either way. We can ask for the money right. We have to prove you know what I'm that we spent like, it. Do you have an opinion? If we use it, it will be like not a lot <laughs> on that, you know? So it just my remembering the conversation, we had <coughs> talked about where the budget was going percentage wise. Mm -hmm. And we had talked about it being around seven yep. and getting it down to four point one or those numbers are in my head right now, and that was because we were taking it out of the sergeant fund, because that we weren't trying to be that high. Am well, I thinking of something completely different? For next different? year. No, you're right. No, you're oh, right. Okay. Thinking of next year's budget. So either oh, way, right. it's so not we're, next year's budget. We've already taken it out. So okay. We, yeah. we so did bring the budget there. down by yeah. taking it out. Now the decision is, do you want to expend the money from the sergeant fund now, or do you want to make that decision in April when you know how much is left in un... Um, the unfund, the, the unspent. unsigned fund balance. What is it called? Unassigned fund balance. Unassigned, unassigned, unassigned fund balance, which means it's <laughs> it's left over. So that's really what's on the table. And we can't give the money back to the trust fund. No. So we really need to wait to see how much we can expend 
and then whatever's left over we take out of the trust fund. You could do it that way. Yeah. Or we could do a full trust fund. Full trust fund and then whatever money is left over it goes back to the taxpayers. Yes. Mm -hmm. A few years ago we had a a very similar situation with our parking lot. We needed it, it was just <coughs> horrible. Mm -hmm. um, and we had these similar conversations and we waited until the spring because we, we did have um, money in that unassigned fund balance that worked out, we were able to take from, to do the parking lot. And we didn't dip into the trust. Um, we were to pay, pay for it fully out of the, out of the, the unassigned fund balance. Mm -hmm. But those are very different circumstances because a lot of that was like uh, some COVID money and some state money and a lot of different savings. So I feel like this is kind of like, you know, we could be looking at a much smaller amount that we're sending back. So I feel like the trust is there for like safety improvements and I feel like we need a roof. And so my vote would be to use the sergeant funds for like the whole amount and send whatever we have left over to the taxpayers. And we're talking about seventy six thousand dollars. Just so we're just so that was I know the estimates went from one hundred and two, but I think it, it was seventy was, something. Yeah, it was seventy two. Like seventy two, yeah. give or take five thousand for what? It's something that happens while they're doing the roof. So just so we're all clear, it's about seventy six thousand. Either way. Yeah, I just feel it's like about safety and well-being, and that's what that trust is for. And we projected that we would need a roof, but it happened a little sooner than we had projected. And so now we're kind of... Well, this is a question for the three of you. The, the, the plan over time would be eventually, right, when we take money out of the trust to start replenishing it again, especially the maintenance trust in case we have boilers go out. So wouldn't you be possibly looking at unassigned fund balance to replenish... Trust. Trust well, this is the maintenance trust is separate from the sergeant trust. So the maintenance trust that we have is for like oh, this say, is sergeant. You're right. Yeah. yeah so the yeah, yeah. so the maintenance okay. is like say the boiler breaks and we need yeah. that yeah. fixed. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so the Sorry. sergeant is like that separate one. Yeah. I was so, totally yeah. Right. yeah. And I Got hope it. I said sergeant, but yeah, you yeah. have you did, and I yeah. I worried the maintenance. That's okay. my fault. Yeah. yeah. And I think that trust has like two hundred and something thousand in it. About two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. This feels like you are working something in your head. What's what's your Why thoughts? Do you do that, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me work it in my head. Well, I mean, so what? What's left? We've already paid some of it. So what's left? It's like 40, 40 something is left. We've already paid for some of it. We had to put the down payment down. So okay. what yep. happens is you have you have to pay for things first. Right. The operating budget has to And then the trust it. reimburses you. Correct. So you're seeing it, the expense here, and the question is on the table is, do we want to go to the trust for the full amount, or do we want to wait and only ask the trust for what the operating budget can't afford and preserve the trust? That's either, <laughs> either one is fine with me. Or wait and see in April. I mean, we're like, you know, we're going to go over the budget. We're looking at an increase of 7.47. Like, I say we send as much money back to the taxpayers as we can and try to go for that trust, which is what it's there for. And I think that's a pretty big item. And, and that was my question. So when we had discussed it, we were saying if we took the, if we took the money out of the trust, the 7.4 yeah. went down. That 7.4 uh, includes... Okay. Okay. That 7.4 is not the proposed budget. That is the proposed budget plus if the collective bargain agreement is okay. yeah. voted on. So the proposed budget change is 4.19. But I think what you might be trying to say uh, is that it will offset the funds that we need to raise for the next, for this budget. So this is still going to be an increase, but we're going to be asking less from the taxpayers because we're going to be sending more back to them. Yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily change this. Really what it would change is that, I mean, because our, our budget for 24 is already set. Right. So, and our budget for 23 is already set as well. We have, so there's how much we budget for everything, which is what we vote and get forward, yep. and there's how much we actually spend. That, excuse me if I am explaining this incorrectly, right? Mm -hmm. um, if there's extra, we can vote to put that to the taxpayers, right? Or we just, it goes it back to the taxpayers. Goes, yeah. yeah. 
If it doesn't go to the trust fund. <clears throat> if it doesn't go to the trust fund. So, so we're potentially looking at an extra 70 going back to the taxpayers. Okay. And so if we can wait till April just to make decisions, it, why, why it, does that have to be done now? It would, I mean, that's, so that's the thing is we'd be looking at essentially taking that taking the trust fund and that money would be going to the taxpayers more or less yeah so so right now in your current year financial in the board pack that is included right now you have a hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars of remaining expense mm -hmm. okay and yeah and that includes us paying for the part of the roof out of this now if we choose to do the whole roof out of the trust what happens is we draft a nice little letter to the trustee and trust funds. I attach all the receipts and we say, please reimburse us this amount of money. And then they send us a check. And then you're going to see that on the revenue side over here or we relieve right. the expense. The question is just how do we want to do it right now? Or because you have 138000 of remaining expense, do you want to not expend the whole trust amount? We wouldn't be able to. We wouldn't get the final invoice until the work is completed, correct? correct. So you wouldn't be able to send receipts to the trust until <laughs> right. the work is completed. Yeah, and yes. And we already, you already made the motion before anything happened to expend a certain up to a certain amount from the surging fund for the roof. Yes. So that part has happened. Whether you decide now or April to do unassigned balance this much this trust fund this much mm -hmm. either way it doesn't matter I think what was important is that you already opened up the door yes. that we could take up to this amount of money from sergeant to pay for the roof mm -hmm. um, um, so if you want to take the full amount they're not going to throw in that offsetting in the revenue to bring up your fund balance yeah because what, what I'm worried about is you know we still have one boiler that you know needs repair and it's mm -hmm. like what if like February the boiler goes down then we can use that some of that 138 that we're mm -hmm. gonna send you know for that and then we don't have to take money out of the maintenance fund so it's just yeah but there's also a reason to defer this decision until you're closer to the end of the year because then you will have all the information right. on the table about any other maintenance issues a student could move in that could be expensive to educate like there's a lot of things that could happen in my experience between now and April um, that could be expensive you never know you never know what's gonna happen mm -hmm. so do you do you want to make that decision now or do you want to say when I see the financials in April I'm gonna decide it's really up to you guys so my opinion on this is we have our yearly budget if we can get a roof done <coughs> within our yearly budget and not have to break glass on the sergeant funds I would rather do that um, that that is that is my opinion um, I, it's so can I just ask a question Andy? yeah but if the trust fund is there for this purpose, why aren't we using it? I guess <coughs> why not use it? That would just be my question. Like, if we can save <coughs> the roof from the fund, <coughs> why, why not use it? Is it because if we have the budget already here, it's already been voted for, it's we're safe? I get that. To well, me, that's tucked in pretty nice and neat, and we're not expending any more than what we've asked for because that is something I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. But if it's there, why wouldn't we use it? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, that, I just want to know the, the dip, like. So here, here would be my argument towards okay. it. If we had a similar situation, some future down the line, and we're looking at our budget and we're at or going over, and something comes up like a roof or something, something big we still have our trust fund available that we haven't dipped into in times where we're not up against the wall on something so right now we have our budget we're able to do it within our budget mm -hmm. um, without touching those funds the safety fund yeah the and safety net mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. it, there could be another year <laughs> where I mean inflation seems to be going under control but say it runs out of control our food expenses go through the roof we're over budget and something else happens but we couldn't use the sergeant fund for food could we 
the no, sergeant I'm, fund, I'm just, the, sar- right, the maintenance, I I the yeah. sergeant fund, the parameters were very broad. Broad. Yeah. Okay. They were very broad. That's what the sergeant fund was attractive. The maintenance fund, not so broad. Special ed is just as it's described. I mean, you don't have to decide tonight because I mean, yeah. it's only encumbered. It's not actually spent yet. Mm-hmm. So we just have to decide when we actually. And spend how much it. is in the sergeant fund? Two forty. Two hundred forty seventy. Yes, and I agree with Kirsten with what she said, you know, why would we not use it for this circumstance? And then I'm thinking about the roof, and it's usually like the estimate's usually a plus or minus 5%, and we're not going to know what they're going to get into until they get up there and peel that roof back. It could be an additional $20,000, and... um, yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that could come up with. Uh, we're doing this in April. Like, what if this potentially is going to go an extra week because they run into things and we can't open for school? You know, there's just different things that, you know, we might incur expenses. But that's where our vote to expend out of the sergeant fund as needed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. has already allowed us to account for that. Mm-hmm. To where at the end of the school year, if this puts us <laughs> over budget or we need to do it, do something to get with back when the budget it's available there okay so yeah so why don't we just wait looks like it looks like we're for sergeant and you might not be but let's just push it and see how it goes well, but like I you think, said we already had that motion. i think yeah. i think being able to get to it is what's the most important piece right like, right yeah, yeah. And so so right now it's just encumbered we haven't sent any checks up the door yet and so we j- we'll just need to decide as the time gets closer do we want how much do we do how much we do you want to get reimbursed do you how much do you want to be for? reimbursed for exactly so right now, it's and, and can it, can we decide that? Like, if I'll say to, the budget is fifty yeah. percent and sergeant fund is fifty percent, like, yeah. can we decide the number? Yeah, yep. we, we, it just has to be less than what we actually paid, okay, right. or equal to equal to. Equal to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so that's just really the big increase. What's showing expense wise because we added the encumbrance. We had to add the encumbrance because we had to open up a purchase order for the company to do work with us. And so if we. Whatever we want the trust to reimburse, we'll put that as an offsetting revenue when we get there. But for right now, that's the big increase in expense. But did anyone else have any other questions on the other expenses that were added from last month? There was just a few others related to um, some savings with employee turnover, some preschool tuition, um, Atlantic CPR. I had a question, Molly. And field trips. On substitutes that line yeah. are we I know I had asked if we could keep a separate line for the additional money that we're spending terrors when they have to take over for a classroom teacher is that anywhere has that started um, that's not anywhere in here that would be that would have to um, I'll have to attach a different you won't see that in here okay I just I just saw some substitutes and I was just curious I just I just want to know, like, yeah. you know, well, are we short-staffed, and mm-hmm. you know, what are the percentage of times that we're not finding a sub, and is that affecting, you know, the students' academic day, and what can we do maybe with HR to get more subs in here? Um, and Brandon, I know you probably could answer this, and I don't know if things have gotten better, but like, yeah. you know, I don't know, like a job fair, or I'm not sure. Just we we have had job fairs, we've had lots of so, posting. Okay. This is not unique to this building, and SAU is not unique. So it hasn't recovered. Nope. Again, 40% of the teachers and support staff did not return post COVID. 40% of the work staff. Um, And pairs are um, extremely, we're extremely short in all of it. So, I mean, we did postings in the office. Like, short of wearing a sandwich sign and outside East Kingston, I think Brandon's done a lot. And HR is definitely, I mean, she loses sleep (laughs) over this because we are so short-staffed. Yeah. Um, but I do think it would be good to look at that, and Brandon said it has been happening frequently where pairs are having to cover and yeah, get sure steps to pay, to so it would be good for you guys to have to that like, information yeah, yeah, to look at. For a teacher, they get the, the extra pay. Yeah, I'm trying to see. If we'll, try, we'll have to figure out the report from ADS to yeah. run for that. Yeah. Okay. Do, so um, do teachers... Could be directly to my school, but do teachers um, get paid to cover another class? No, no, right? So um, different schedule. But when you when a teacher we try to like piecemeal it together mm-hmm. um, in, in this kind of crisis shortage that we're having, 
um, if you have to cover a class, you know, you give a, a stipend, like a little stipend for covering that class. So we do a ton of in-house coverage. I think um, at the middle school and high school, that's fairly common. Common. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Teachers and in the co-op can get paid to give up a prep period to cover yeah. a class. Exactly. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, so Michelle's just looking at, or well, and Michelle and I will work together on it, but she's saying there might be a different earning code for when that happens, when you just have to run the report by now. Thank you. So did anyone else have any questions on the current year financial before we dive into the budget? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So um, also in front of you is the packet of manifests. Hopefully you'll get a chance oh. in that brown folder there. Um, so oh, we made a little package for you to hopefully kind of break down the budget. Um, and if anyone else wants a copy, there's some right there. Um, so the first page, what we did is we pulled together your budget and your CBA, because those essentially are going to become your budget. It just appears on the ballot as two different Warren articles. So Warren Article 1 is going to be what we call the operating budget, your line-by-line -line budget, and our Article 2 is going to be your CBA. So it... <laughs> When we reviewed the operating budget before, it was higher, but we have since taken out the roof. Um, so it's down to the 4.19%. So if you look at the line-by-line -line detail, which I believe you went over last time, it shows the 4.19%. Then to look at Warren Article 2, we've also put in what the CBA increases for the first year. So on the ballot, you have to do what's called Sanbornization. You have to put the cost impact for the first year, and then the projected cost impact for the remainder years that the CBA is negotiated for, if it's a two or three year CBA. Yeah. Um, and then, or four year. And then um, for your tax impact, essentially, Warren Article 1 and 2 will be added together. So we did this for you on the page right here. So the total increase would be $255,005.20 or 7.47% when you add those together. Now, for tax impact, a little bit below that, we did a projected tax impact for you. This isn't um, exact, but approximate. So in order to get your tax impact, what you have to do is take the change, which is the 255000 divided by the town's valuation times 1,000. And so that's what this does here. So. We broke it down to say the operating budget was a 36 cents per thousand. The CBA is 28 cents per thousand. So if you add those together, it's 64 cents per thousand. Okay. Then on the following pages, I just ran a quick pivot chart on the different sections of the budget to show what makes up that $143,000 change of the operating budget side of the budget. And I think you went over a lot of these last time. And then mm -hmm. also we calculated the default. So since East Kingston is what they call the SB2 town, um, Article 1 is going to have two numbers on it. It's going to have the proposed budget and it's going to have a default budget to say if this article does not pass then it will go to default. And so the basis of the default is the previous year's budget, which is the current year's budget, so fiscal year 24, and then you have to add or subtract mandatory obligations. And so mandatory obligations are requirements of special education, the SAU assessment, um, and anything on an active CBA. So since our teachers are in a negotiation right now, they would be, they're all coming in over at current year salaries, and that's all in Warren Article Number Two. Um, and so, the paras do not have a CBA, yeah. right? Yep. So, like all the, all of their salaries and the default would come over at current year salaries. So you don't see it, anybody not in a CBA, the salaries don't get included. Um, in addition, a lot of the things that we have multi-year contracts for like electricity or the buses at first student, the increases for those do not come over. It's not part of the default budget. 
the only thing that's in the default budget are contracts that were on the ballot as a warrant article. So since the CDA was on the ballot as a warrant article, those are contractual increases. But increases related to electricity or utilities or for student supplies. So we all know going to the store, things are rising in cost. Anything related to inflation is not included. And so that's going to be the difference between your default and your proposed. Um, so what I did here is I said, okay, your default is $3,512,901. The proposed is $3,558,581. I put on this sheet, what's the difference? Because when people go to the ballot to vote, they're going to see the two numbers, and this is the difference between those numbers. So first is the non-union salary. And also, you cannot include for non-union people the GMR for health. You can for people in the union because it's dictated by the CBA, um, but not for non-union. Um, any supplies and equipment or operational expense due to inflation, it all comes over at current year budget. Transportation, special ed, yes, because that is a requirement by law, but for student, that increase, no. And then food service is a big one, so all that rising cost of food doesn't come over the default. <clears throat> so that is the main differences between the two numbers that people are going to see on the ballot. And we just have to figure out a way to compensate for all that. So if you were to go to default, then yes, okay. you would have to find a way to operate the school. Because really the voters vote for one number, they don't vote for the individual yeah. line items, so Brandon would really have to put on his thinking cap to um, figure out how to operate the school with the default. Yeah, okay. And then after that is your line by line. Um, the CBA line, the C, uh, when do we talk about what years two, three, and four look like to everybody? Or is that just when we get to deliberative, that's when we talk about all that? Um, so we do have to address it in the public hearing because it okay. is going to be a warrant article. Um, it can't be changed because we've already agreed upon it. Um, we just have to inform the public. So, okay. we, I mean, we do have that information if we want to talk about it tonight. I mean, um, can I just make a public note that oh, sure. the first year is 111, <coughs> the next year is 30. Or thirty-five, mm -hmm. thirty-four thousand. So um, it's a jump initially, but it extremely stabilizes. So, and we'll talk about that in the delivery. But I think it's mm -hmm. useful to note now. So. All right. Um, do you guys have any questions on the general line items of the budget? I just had a question about um, <coughs> the summer literacy program. Um, in looking at that, I was uh, hoping to get some information on how many kids we service, what that line item is. Is it salaries? I can tell you. Right now it's um, $12,725. So my limited understanding of what the, that program is, how many kids are we servicing, how many staff are, how many staff are we paying? Um, it's a four four week program. Four weeks, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I was just looking for information um, on that. Yep. So that um, just looking at my notes here. Summer learning is uh, two teachers, uh, fifty dollars an hour. Uh, one pair professional, twenty five dollars an hour. It, it, the twelve thousand also includes our kindergarten camp. That we do okay. Um, so that so we those two teachers get paid for those couple days that they come in out of this line as well. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's that's for the and that includes uh, also a parent to work in the garden camp and then our speech pathologist as screeners. So she's included in that as well. And how many kids usually, Brandon? For a kindergarten camp? What, uh, no, or for, whole, for the whole thing. I can I can look it up if you just give me. A and, and, and again, I'm looking, you know, if it's six kids, seven kids, and you have two full-time teachers, that's a, that's a low, low ratio. 
the kindergarten thing is two, two days, two days, three days? Um, I think it's all week. It's two is it four days. days? Two and a half days? Two and a half days. Oh, two half days. It's, yeah. It's right? Mm. It's two full days. Two, oh, it's two. Yeah, days. I thought. Yeah. It was four half days. Now it's two full. Two, days. <laughs> two full. So from eight to two or whatever. The, yeah. Whatever. Eight okay. to yeah, something like that. Yeah. So kindergarten is two full days. Yes. Okay. I don't know it's just it's just something to look at if you're looking at your ratios correctly. Two full time teachers with seven kids. If you had a teacher in a para, easy fine. I mean, we don't need to do that tonight. You can get. To I'm me. looking at the oh, okay. right now. Yeah. Oh, we can. <laughs> On a not hard data note, I've known parents that have kids in it, mm -hmm. and the the progress was. Last year we had 35 students. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's yeah. that's the, that's a lot. The progress was substantial. But. Do they? document that data that's it so if they, we have 35 kids in that summer literacy program yeah. entry coming in in July entrance leaving in August do they monitor that that progress they just say yes. I'm pretty sure yeah. <laughs> I mean I'm not one of the teachers in that I don't have access to the progress like monitoring like base, right now. Sorry, I'm well, are they using like the progress monitoring that everyone's using, like in school? All, like, are they using Acadia? Are they using things that they use anyway, so that the kids' data is already in there, and so they're able to see? I mean, they're they're faculty here, so they should be able to continue using that same measurement so that they can see if there's actual progress. They have access to that data, right? So they know they know where they're starting. Okay. For that first day. Yep. I don't know if they have. If they do anything at the end. A true real read, reading reading at the end. Okay. Yeah. But they, but what they do just as when they make decision is they look at the students when they return in the fall what yep. their data points and is there a regression or did they prevent regression through the summer learning intervention? So there is another data point eventually. I'm not sure it's August. It might be September. Yeah, September. Or late September. Late September. Yeah. Late September. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 35 kids is substantial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While we're talking about kindergarten, do we have a projected number yet for how many kindergartners we might have? Not yet. I'll, I'll get it for the January meeting. Okay, cool. Do, does the 35 kids, Brandon, include the ESY, or is that a whole, that's a different number? That's different. That's a different number? Yeah. yeah. So did anyone want to make any other changes, or is this what we want to take to the public hearing? I don't think you need a formal motion, but yeah. just want to make sure. I've got no changes. I didn't. I'll look at it again, and I could email you if, you have, if there's something. But um, you notated the changes, and I looked over that last one really well, so I think we're good. Okay, great. Um, I'll just pick up the manifest when you guys are done. Oh, I have to sign them. Sorry. That's okay. I'll just wait till you're done. I'll be fast. <laughs> All right. Da, 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 da. Um, do you guys have any comments about anything? Sure. Okay. All right. Da, 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 da. Proposed budget approval of minutes. So we got from November 6th, we've got public and non public. Something. I do have something, okay. yeah. I have a few things. Uh, I just want to make sure I can see. So, um, under public, uh, business and financials, uh, under public, our budget is $3,608,000. Five hundred eighty-one dollars and five cents. Uh, it says here that the budget is three hundred sixty-eight, which would be very nice. <laughs> or not so nice for some of the teachers. Right. Well, you know, yeah. hypothetically, if we were, <laughs> if we only had things, if yeah. inflation wasn't so high, yeah. <laughs> so that's one edit there. And then under chair's report, policy committee, 
under one, AC needs to be changed to ADC. And then again in my motion. The AC is a policy, but ADC is the one that we were referencing. Thank you, Molly. Thank you as well. I have a I have a question. So, uh, in under uh, non-public session. It said that we had made a motion to expend up to $12,000 from the maintenance trust fund. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes? Okay, not it, the sergeant. And I'm going back to uh, yes. Two meetings ago was sergeant. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I'm just yes. checking that yes. that's correct. Thank you for that. This one was for this right here. Okay. Safety and security. Okay. Yeah, if, mm -hmm. if you want to discuss that, we can go to non-public again if you don't remember what we talked about. No, that I just okay. want to, I think I'm just getting confused between yeah. the two. Okay. I do want to go into non-public to talk about some stuff, but okay. I just want to make sure that was coming out of the right trust fund. Okay. Um, and I didn't know Sergeant was the meeting before, but yes, I would like to discuss that safety and security that we went into non-public last time and non-public again. Okay. All right. Um, I make a motion. Oh. Make I'll make motion. it. I'll make a motion to approve the public and non-public minutes from November fourth as amended. All second. Third. All in favor? Aye. Okay, okay we got principal's report. That's done. Chair's report. Uh, superintendent evaluation. We are meeting on Thursday in person with uh, Esther. Um, so I'll have more information <clears throat> on the next med meeting. Um, I'll hit safety and security quick. Uh, there's been no additional meetings since the last meeting. So. All right, policy committee. So uh, there's no policies for you tonight. Oh. So yay. Um, so we met and we reviewed 10 policies that are going to be in our joint board policy manual. So we went with Heather, our Director of Human Resources, and Patrick O'Day. They kind of recommended these 10 to start with. So you'll see those in January before the next joint board meeting. And so all the policies we have right now, it's already here, so they'll be very familiar. We're just editing them and changing a few things to fit the joint board. So that, that's all. Okay. Uh, SAU Wellness Committee, I still have not heard or had any communication from the chair. Um, my guess is that there will be a, one of the quarterly meetings is coming up, so I need to go check. That will be on me to go check if it's already established, but I've not heard. We've never made up the last one. So, um, and community engagement advisory group, um, I sent out a webinar and uh, curriculum which is called the um, Outdoor Learning. It's called the walking curriculum for the early years, and it's based upon um, outdoor learning classrooms and pathways that kids can take. And there's different situations that you can go and have different stations or different um, curriculums at different spots along a pathway. And they've done some research on movement, obviously like sensory learning and things like that, things that we already do here at EKES. Um, but what I really found interesting is that they have modules. For, exam uh, for example, Indigenous People was one of the modules that I went into, and it goes into um, your actual native land that you're working in, and it's a station. And so I sent it to everyone. Um, I did not get a response from anyone, so I don't know if anyone went on to the actual um, uh, webinar, um, but I have it if anyone's interested in looking at it. Um, it looks really interesting. Um, we have not met. We have our we have an upcoming meeting, I think, in January, correct? Um, so it's slow. Um, I did send this wa uh, walking curriculum to Zoe Susi over at the library. She did say she was going to take a look at it. We are going to start recruiting community members for their expertise, uh, hopefully after January. 
and start looking at what the spring will what we can do in the spring back there and then maybe over the summer when their kids are not here um, but that's what's in my head right now so hoping to get more members hoping to get community members who can help us with architecture um, botany I'll even say curriculum if we have retired teachers who are out there that want to join uh, the conversation the second um, piece is, is I had a conversation with a staff member here about um, reigniting I guess he only said that they've been two in the, his time here um, a turkey trot um, over uh, Thanksgiving and really looking at the push you can push pull jog walk hop trot um, but I think that would be something that's going to be less intensive than the Kingfisher Park out back um, something that can be a little bit more immediate um, so I'm going to start investigating a little bit on that also maybe work with the rec center on that one um, two things um, you and I need to set up a date to meet with uh, the principal at SST yes I talked to her the other day about uh, oh, January and, so she, and she remembered yeah, she remembered oh, and she, okay. she, um, she just needs to know from us if January works and then she'll try to get it okay. meeting set up so I, I, I can reach out to her and you and I can connect on a day in January okay. Um, and then um, the other thing, when you brought up Turkey Trot, a couple years ago, our, our in-house wellness team looked at doing at doing a race, and we started looking at the logistics of it. It involved the police. Police, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we, it didn't go anywhere. It kind of stopped there. Okay. So, um, yeah, and I know it's a new police chief, so I want to reach out to our new police chief to That's look where at the that. rec department could come in and help out. I don't know what the group's called. There's a group of docents, you may already know this, they're going to schools and they teach the children about one of the <coughs> things is about um, riptides and sand movement. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them, they're all trained docents, uh, but some of them are PhDs in different, you know, retired Thanks. in different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know about these I, people? No, mm -hmm. I don't. Because my next door neighbor is one. Oh, okay. Um, and, and he's, I can give you his phone number. I can give so I, I think Zoe and I have been trying to work on like a flyer and we're going to start posting them at the library and in different places. And my email will be on there for people to reach out to me if they're interested in, in just joining the conversation as we look at what can happen back there. Um, you know, my vision gets pretty big, pretty fast is what could, what could be going on back there. But um, I would welcome any conversations <coughs> about people's expertise and coming in and, and building. They bring in, I think, like crabs and lobsters and oh. stuff like that. Okay. For the, so for that's the in, like more inside stuff. So this, Yes, but they may do outside stuff. They might stuff do it, right. I know okay. That they work on the gondola and everything in Portsmouth. Oh, in Portsmouth, yes. Yeah. Okay. But they may charge, I don't know. I don't know. There's anything about that's it, okay that they're very skilled professional people. excellent maybe we're we looking could, for those people yeah right. maybe skilled we could incorporate them. that into like our steam program mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh, i think and they go be... to local schools mm -hmm. all the time sure i've never yes. heard of that just i mean we're right near the ocean we should know about riptides and yeah different <clears> things and <throat> well there's any variety of any yeah there's different modules that they they modules, have that yes. they come in and do okay. mm -hmm. that's fantastic mm -hmm. great what's the news? Right. What was the name of the? He's the called group? Larry O'Neill. Oh. Larry O'Neill. I can give you his wife's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> you may be moving soon, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now you definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> to see what doing. <laughs> all right. Uh, community engagement. Uh, that yeah, kind that. of encompass all that. that. Was, okay. Yeah, covered it. All right. Uh, Tiffany. I have nothing new for Michael. All right. Uh, once again, your goal, I think, is pretty much covered with your things. Uh, my goal, as Brandon said, we met, discussed the roof, um, starting to get a, a time frame or a more grasp on what a five-year plan will look like, and we should have that early next year, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. That. 
we'll, we'll have it by the time I'm out of here. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, and then I didn't know, um, we skipped over that, so I didn't know if you wanted to, when you wanted to go back to that. Do you have something about a support staff handbook? Oh, yes. You to talk yes. About? That is, um, so that's in your packet. Uh, you, we included in there what we're currently doing for this year. And then the one that has all the, the red markings on it is the proposed um, staff handbook for our support staff that is reflected in the proposed budget. Oh, yes. Um, so that's, that's the purpose of putting it in there for you to review um, because it would have um, budgetary impact. So, and it, and it does explain the, um, the para line in your budget. Does it also include, there was stuff discussed through CBA negotiations? No, no, cause it's no. This is just the support staff. Before I came on board, I know there was a conversation about getting their pay up oh, over a yes, course gotcha. of time. So that's what this is spelled okay. out for you in the in the staff handbook. Okay, that was um, that. So it sort of helps explains the budget line. Okay, yep. Right. Okay. And Excellent. We it, yeah, we put it on the agenda last month, but we forgot to bring it, so here it is. All right, so we've got apologies. chair's report done. New business. Um, so we need to amend the 2023-24 calendar, removing the January PD date. We have um, two options. Can I know you and I, go, go Andy and I have talked about it a little bit, but I've had this conversation at SL, SAU for at nausea. So <laughs> we now know that the building will be used for town voting on January 23rd. Um, so we would like to have that be a PD day and not have students in the building. We had January 12th slated as a teacher workshop day. There, there was discussions around do we switch and only and have the 23rd be the 12th day. The feedback from most of the teachers in the surrounding elementary schools was to have both PD, PD days in January and cancel one of them in March. So there are two professional development days on school calendar for March, teacher workshop days. We'd like to um, scratch the one at the second half of the March and just do January 12th and the 23rd in, um, as PD days. And, that, and that's what we're asking um, your approval to amend the calendar to state that. The reason being is the new um, report cards and the narratives and the teachers being allowed to have PD in time to really discuss that um, to write meaningful um, narratives and whatnot for parents mid-year and being having access to um, the director of instruction, Jill, and other other staff members to support their narrative writing in January. And so just to clarify, there's no change to the numbers just shifting around the dates. Yes, there's no change to the number of PD days that were on the original calendar. Okay. It's just moving March to March January 29th. There, are, there are two to March. Yeah. Okay. Taking March 29th and moving that the, to January 29th. And the other the other PD date, so professional learning date is March 14th, which is voting. Morning day, yeah. Right. So that has to stay. That, that has to stay. That has to stay. Um, and progress reports will be sent out on January 26th. Yeah. So they have the 19th. So they, well, they have the 12th. They'll have the 12th to for, write. Yep, yeah, and get for those PD who are ready to write. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Right. Support. Okay. And then they would have the 23rd to write. The 20th, no. No, the, the Just the 12th. Just the 12th. The 23rd, we have planned PD. Oh, you are, you, oh, you already have something planned. Okay. If the board approves yeah. oh. moving it, yes. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, continuing the work that we started with Jill that we were doing on Fridays, the curriculum mapping, um, mostly for all of our, all of our staff. Cool. Just launch to, like, Yes, oh. vertically aligning. Bert, thanks. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think Amy from Lexington. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. I make a motion to what's the March one? 29th. 29th. To move cancel. the March to cancel the March 29th PD date and uh, have a March 12th PD date. That was already there. We want the March. We want March 20, January 23rd. January 23rd. Yes. PD date. I'll second. Third. All in favor? 
you. Okay. Vision Summit. I put a little letter in your in your um, board packet just to sort of summarize, because there's not a lot to tell except for be on the edge of your seats and wait for a date and can someone volunteer to join the committee for um, the Vision Summit around a portrait of our graduate um, with Dr. Asbel and other members of the committee. So it's really just to be determined. I'll do it. That's fine. Yeah. We do it us. Uh, okay. That's what we do. It would be you or I or a new person. Right. So that's just. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I, ho I hope I have the dates for you in January. Yeah, as long as I can get the day, I can use it as my own professional learning day. Great. All right. Uh, in the collective EKS Teachers Association collective bargaining agreement. So, um, what all? So it has. Um, we we didn't go public with it last time because they had not ratified it. Okay. So now East Kingston's Teachers Association has voted to ratify um, the um, proposed collective bargaining agreement that um, the board chair negotiated with them. So tonight we would hope to leave with a motion to agree and put it on the Warren article. Okay. Um, and I open it up for discussions and conversations. Uh, um, da, 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 da. Let's start with this. Um, you guys saw, we got a little bit of an overview. Um, we're allowed to discuss. Yeah, no. Now that they've ratified it, you can discuss it. Okay. Yep. So um, I'm going to give a quick overview. Um, let's start with the budget impact um, for fiscal year 25. Um, there's an increase due. This includes FICA, um, maternity, retirement, all those things, longevity. And salary of eleven thousand, uh, uh, excuse me, one hundred eleven thousand, close to one hundred twelve thousand. Fiscal year 25, 26, it's going to be thirty four thousand. Twenty seven and twenty eight are about sixty three and sixty two, um, somewhere around there. So, what this overall, what this contract does is we take we took the base we just redid the grid from scratch more or less from scratch we took the base of the grid and we brought it up to really recognize that in the previous contract the teachers um, really took a back seat to this also the other thing that that does is um, it gives us a higher base when we're looking for new teachers New young teachers, which which we have had and which we've hired a lot of. Um, the other thing that it does is there was a bunch of discrepancy about as you moved up the pay your um, steps, your, steps as your steps. Thank you. Um, there was a difference in the percentages that it came mm -hmm. through. Now it's one percentage all the way down. And then what that ends with is we ended up a little bit lower than many of the towns around as far as the top most tenured, or tenured isn't the right word, but the, the most experienced teachers mm -hmm. are a little bit lower than the surrounding towns. How that's compensated for is the other thing that we want to promote as a school, as a board, is continuing education. So as you move over in the columns, as you continue to have more professional development and get more degrees and so forth, you get an increase in percentages as you move over in the columns. Um, so it is really incentivizing continuing to grow as a teacher and in your, inside your profession. Um, that is what the contract's about. Um, in a nutshell. There's uh, miscellaneous stuff with regards to retirement and some other things that were all uh, negotiated and so forth. Um, uh, I have a question. Yeah. 
So for teachers to have their professional learning and you talk about continuing their growth, right? Because research changes constantly and we mm -hmm. have to stay current with research, right? Because that's super important. What we know works, we gotta be able to provide that for the teachers. So was there course reimbursement put into the contract so that we can help teachers pay for them to get a master's or a CAGS um, or an EDD if they wanted it? So we're, we're asking for them to, to be able to move up in the steps. We've given them, we've built in, it sounds like we've built in steps for loyalty and steps for um, when they come in, mm -hmm. right? But for us, for them to continue their education so that they can jump a step, they also need to go back to school. Yep. Um, and so is that in the contract also, that reimbursement is in there? Yes, there's, there always has been That was always there. Okay. What was tweaked was the criteria around what the district would approve and give you gotcha. credit for. Okay. Because there has been an influx, as you know, of organizations that promise you three credits worth on a Saturday. And what we want, if you're getting three college credit worth of PD, we want it to be three college credit work of graduate PD, which means you probably couldn't complete it on a Saturday. So that was more of the conversations around was if you credits have to mean a certain thing and have to meet a certain criteria if, if you're going to count it towards your PD in, in your and growth and your of the, steps. Most of those sing, single, single courses, right, where you get three credits for professional learning aren't being put into a program, right? So people would have to be, any teacher would have to come in and say, I'm going into a graduate program. Is that part of the SAU? We no. did explicitly say that, but the criteria listed you would see on any syllabus in a college course. Okay. So, and so they could have a plus 15. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yes, like, you could have a plus 15. You could 15. have a plus 15 and not have a degree, <coughs> but you could get a step for a plus 15. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, and in that, you know, like she said, the criteria is more defined, and through this, you end up going through a process through the district mm -hmm. to get your course approved and that sort of thing. So you'll know um, if the funds are available for the reimbursement, um, if you've already done what you needed to. And so all that can more or less get approved through a, through a process that wasn't as well defined uh, prior to this. Um, is it a set, excuse me, is yeah. it a set amount for reimbursement? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the upper limit for a year? So um, I believe this collective bargaining agreement is three courses, three four credit courses at the UNH rate per credit. Oh. So they pay for the whole thing? You pay mm -hmm. up, pay for three college courses in a, in a school year for a teacher, yeah. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, so that's right. If you, if you managed it correctly, yeah. you know, if, if, even if it took you four years and you managed it correctly, it would allow a teacher to be able to get another degree. To get another degree mm -hmm. at the town's expense and get a raise in salary at the town's expense. Yep, that's pretty typical. It, you would yeah. be hard not, not in any other industry. No, but in education, I think you would be hard pressed to find a collective bargaining agreement to not have tuition reimbursement for teachers because they are the only profession that creates all other professions, our educators. So we want them to continue to get professional development. The students' brains are changing that is showing up in their classroom. They, they have to have the tools to educate anyone who shows up in their classroom. Um, the, so the research behind it is, is an absolute have to. Yeah. So we have ch we have seen so much change in the last five years in, in, in how the brain learns, how kids learn, how we learn as adults. Um, that research has to be forefront in all that we're doing, and even in curriculum design. Yep. It's absolutely critical. With that being said, schools that I know of all have tuition reimbursement. Most of them, if they're large enough, can actually make, you know, they have cohorts. Yep. So we'll say, if we can get 20 people, we'll cut the cost in half for you, and then the, cut, the cost on the teacher is half, and then the school ends up paying for half or something like that. So it's very typical that professional learning is, 
is definitely given through most districts. We, we don't want our educators to be stagnant, just mm -hmm. as we wouldn't want the medical profession to be stagnant. They are constantly getting updated on research and best practices, and that is that is really what the field of education does as well. They have to get the medical, medical profession. They, they pay, pay for, for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, or they're attached to universities, so they don't always pay for their own. So I guess that could be a different de debate. Only they're if not. You for only yeah, only yes. if they were faculty members. Oh. You have to get a grade no lower than a B for the yes. yeah. reimbursement, too. Well, everybody gets the A's and all A's Graduate now anyway, so. Really? Yeah. I mean, Not I have well. a college student, and I don't think she's getting all A's. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't mean to put her out there on the spot. Well, I can put my two out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I have a question. Yeah. On these, uh, on this CBA increase of 111000 Mm-hmm. What's the percentage increase from the previous year that that 111,000 It comes out to about 3%. 3%. Three percent. Three something percent. Now, if you look. Now, how do you get, if the operating budget changes is 4.19% and the CBA is 3%, that's yeah, how you that, get to your 7.47? Yeah, th yeah, 3 point something percent. Yeah, that's okay. exactly it. And what were the other sending towns? Like, how close are we to other sending towns? Middle. Middle. Well, most of the spots were middle of the road. We are not at the top, but we're competitive for, um, and Annie can speak to, we're competitive for recruiting new teachers to come into the field. That's where we're more competitive. But as you go up, we're kind of even middle of the road. Yeah, uh, we're, on the upper end, we are, Middle compared to some schools, we're below. Salary, salary, yeah, wise. salary, salary wise. wise, we're we're below. In some instances, not a significant amount, or not an insignificant amount, um, but we're also not the lowest. So, we're we're kind of in the middle. Um, in some aspects, we are very similar comp wise to like a Kensington to a, a New Fields. Um, uh, we're not nearly as, as high as some of the Exeter or the Stratums. Um, so it's, um, it kind of kind of sits nicely where we, where we are as a school, I think, in general. So, yeah. We've got a bunch of teachers here that I, I assume have looked through a contract as well. If you guys have any input you want to feel free? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I had a question. So in the years of experience, we were, um, you know, as we progressed through the years, is 1 this through the, 12. This is the old one. This is the old one, yeah. Yep. Um, we were at, at the old contract. We were at like a 4.5% increase, steps 1 through 10. Yep. Now we're at a 3.7 for those steps. That is correct. So I just wanted to see, like, what does the scale look like going this way? So you have your... Because um, I didn't get a scale, so are there any increases here? Yes. Like moving this way? Um, and that's yeah. where. Um, this is um, the C that last oh. one BA. Oh. Okay. Um, in the fiscal year twenty four, um, this is what they're on right now, the last contract. So this oh. is now three point seven instead of four point five. But I just wanted to see what the increase this way was for their advance. You know, advancing your education. I know she left. <laughs> I, I, I wanted. Well, I asked. I, I, I did, I, and she said, "Remind." No, no, I, I, I have this. Okay. Um, and excuse everybody, I gotta find it quick. Um, Two percent when you went across. No, uh, no, not always. Um, I can maybe ask you, Renee, another question, yes. potentially while he's looking, and hopefully I don't distract you, but um, it talks about substitute language for teachers giving up their prep to sub were added. Yep. So <clears throat> that was just like a brief, I didn't know if you could speak to that a little bit mm -hmm. more in there. Yes, so if a, if a teacher gave up a prep period to cover another classroom, because mm -hmm. we were short subs, they would get their, I believe, this is 
where I get your meat. Um, I think they get their per diem for that hour. Is that right, Andy? I'd have to look at that. It's not a flat rate. I wasn't part of the conversation. No. Is it, is it, it based a on a formula based off their salary? It's just not a flat rate? It's per diem. I thought it was their per diem broke down to that hour. Is that their per diem rate? Yeah, per diem per hour. Because you're guaranteed a prep period, and if you're giving up that prep period, that means you're going to do that work at another time, right? So all teachers are given a prep period, and so that's the time that they're planning or they're in PLCs or they're doing STAT, like they're doing things that are um, part of their contractual agreement. So if, they're, if they say, I'll do my planning or my grading at another time, and I'll go cover for another teacher because we're short, so staff, they actually are doing it outside of their contract. Am I explaining that correctly? Yes. Yep. So this other time, would that be what they would do at home? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it might And also keep in mind that um, this is essentially, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, this is essentially in lieu of hiring a sub, right? This in would this be case. in place of not finding a sub. Not yes. Finding a sub. So we would have had to pay a sub for this too. So the um, I keep opening the wrong file. Well, technically, it would they would only be covering maybe say like a class. So I think really who would benefit from this would be like the students. Yes, because they would still have that teacher instruction, and maybe that para, you know, could work with other students that need help. And I think it could be huge for um, the learning loss. All right, I got it here. Has there ever been talk about hiring a full-time sub, having in in the building? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that was the trend other buildings did. We didn't put it in this budget because the likelihood of finding someone, we're still short of para. Well, and how often, I mean, percentage of you, we're so small. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's one person out, two people out. We average one and a half a day. One and a half a day? Yep. We average 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I know that um, the, the, the co op, the high school, and the middle school, I think they struggled. I think they got one position filled and then they struggled to get a second. And now I do think they have some permanent subs, but yep. they really still probably don't have as many no. as they need. All right. So um, going back to your question, um, just so everybody can see this and probably see it too. You've got the columns. These are years of experience. And then as you move over this way, this is um, essentially status with regards to education, BA 15, BA 30, master's, or BA 45, etc. So when you go from a BA to a BA 15, and then also 30, you that step is a 2.5 each from a 15, and then from a 15 to a 30, it's a 2.5 percent increase. Yeah, in one column. Um, when you move from a 30 to either a master's or a BA 45, and then along down the low, long down the line, all the way to a 45, that's a 4% increase. That How does puts all this figure in with a 3% increase with the CBA agreement. Is this an addition? That is so you take the salary that everybody is making now, this this new change the difference in everybody's salary, retirement, and everything like that comes out to 111000 as opposed to what the current contract would be. I'm talking about percentage increase in pay. Is it the 2.5 or whatever you just had here plus a 3% that's of how? After, that's the second year. So that 110 is with oh. the new grid, with as everything stays the same, staff as it is, putting them in the new grid, it's going to cost the taxpayers that much and then assuming every teacher moves down a step because they stay another year that is the the um 
the 3.7. Now, staff moving along the right side where they get an additional raise isn't guaranteed each year, and staff members usually don't come back in after one year with a, you know, BA 15. So that that's not guaranteed every year. That is, they earn over a course of time. I've, I'm submitting all my credits. I want to be. I want to go on a track change to HR, and that that's not necessarily from year to year. That's I've done a, 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 a coursework over the last couple of years. Right. I want a track change. So so let, let me give you an example. So teacher X is year three at a BA 15. The current contract has them at fifty three thousand three ninety three. The new contract. Um, sorry. Next year, had they just moved from step three to step four with so, yeah. more your more experience, their salary would be fifty five seven ninety seven. Okay, in this new contract, their salary is going to be fifty seven seven twenty six. So that's more like an eight or a nine percent increase. Over. Well. And that's why you see a bigger jump in year one, because what we did is the very first step we brought up. To attract. To attract. But to make a stable budget going forward, so for instance, each <laughs> step previously was four point. Um, each step previously was. Four point five percent every year is a four point five percent, right? Now each step is a three point seven. So the grid economically shrunk a little bit, mm -hmm. right? We brought up the base. We brought down the top end a little bit as far as percentage increases from year to year. But then we're incentivizing education moving forward and that sort of thing. In the end, the, the two numbers that you kind of look at when we compare everybody else is the top left, which would be year one, know it, or just your standard bachelor's, that's 50,500. That's right in the middle of everybody. Yeah. You look at the top number, which is MA45, year 12, basically maxed out on everything, that's 92,577. That's also right in the middle of anything, and even probably a little bit lower, like Kensington's 107, I think, at that age, or at that step, and somewhere around in there, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. It's definitely over 100. Um, and so we're kind of in the middle of everything with this, specifically with regards to other comp towns, Kensington, Newfields, that sort of thing. We are well below the Exeters and the Stratums. And did I see that there's a increase for longevity? So when they, is longevity different than the 12 <coughs> step? There were two line items there. One was longevity. Yeah, and so. And one's the 12th step, and that's your highest step. Yes, yeah, so, so the, um, the longevity was, there was this weird thing where for the first 10 years, your longevity was 125. And then every year after that, it was 150. Um, and we just made it 150. It, in the end, the accounting difference is probably, you know, it's, it's pretty So good. $150. Yes. Right? So yes, they got a check for, long, for longevity at, at 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, then at 15, the formula changed. So part yeah, that's just, what it was. Okay. Yeah. The formula changed. It, and so this just simplifies it. Yeah, and then we also, there was, um, what was the other thing that we got rid of? The, s <sighs> crap, I can't remember that off the top of my head. Um, but there's there's a change in the retirement for the payout days for the sick. Okay, yeah. Um, but along with that, um, do you have the existing contract? Yes, I do. To, an to answer, so what's the, the 12th step? So what's what what's the, when you hit your 12th step, is that another payout? That was my, like, so there no. were two line items there. Oh, so, so, so you hit the 12th step, but basically you're stagnant, right? Right, right. you so can't move again. Yeah, you can everyone, move over a little bit. 
Um, not everyone on the 12th step gets longevity because longevity means you've been with us for 10 years. We could have hired you at five and you, you're not right. getting. So that's where the second piece came in that, that Andy negotiated. Yeah, so essentially there's a, a yearly stipend that goes into this um, that doesn't get added onto the base salary. So your percentage increase as you move down, basically your salary doesn't run away, right? right. So, I mean, because if, if you've had a teacher that's been here 25 years and they're getting a 4% raise each time, they're making $200,000 a right. year. Mm -hmm. There's multiple reasons why that's an issue. Yeah, right. So, um, so what that does is it, you know, it, it, it gives a little bit of, you've been here a long time, mm -hmm. You've made it this step. We're sorry that you know that you're stuck essentially here, but there's a bit of a stipend to try to well, make it. Yeah. The yeah. cola. cola. Yeah. So well, but also keep in mind the cola on this. So, in this, this is this is a, another thing to talk about. The cola from one grid year to the next is 1.5 mm -hmm. percent. 1.5 percent. Which is um, uh, which is good for the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. It's um, um, it's lower than it was in their last contract. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then no cola this first year. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, the there's not a real cola this first year. That's just a change in change. Yeah. Um, and so, so, so a teacher could get a four percent increase because they were here for an extra year. Plus, they get one and a half percent as a cola. It's three seven, and the one and a half is a cola. One and a half. Yeah, a but keep in mind the previous it was between one and two with a four three or a four was, seven. I can tell you. Four five. Four, sorry, five. I keep forgetting yeah, forget that five. number. Amazing. Four five cola. So so. But they haven't received any. I could be wrong on this. Oh, I'm a rookie. They, they took a one. They there was one year that they there was nothing. Uh, it was a one percent across the board. Uh, one across the board. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's there's a bump this year, but it's it's a more stable across the board moving okay. forward. Um, and and you see you see that in year two, three, and four. Uh, so um, and it it really incentivizes growth in education and. We've got a lot, of, a lot of young teachers here. Some of them are getting back up to a, a salary that matches some of their other districts. So. so how um, much is that longevity um, yearly stipend? So if you're at step 12, yep. the stipend is um, to equal a 3.7 Increase. So if the cola is 1.5, is the difference is 3.7 minus 1.5. That is what you would get at a step 12. The key is it does not add to the base salary. But it doesn't add to your base salary. So it's a separate check. So it's a separate check. Okay. Yeah. And so it's never to exceed 3.7. Yeah, and and that's the that's the key to that is as far as it it's compensation for the fact that you're really otherwise you'd be getting 1.5 percent, right? every year so it's going to get it but again we can't have we can't have salaries that are running through the roof you know, still no, held to that we to be competitive you have to look at the cost of living on the seacoast you yeah. have to look at student loans you have to look at professional learning in its true true space right um, we can't attract you know attracting teachers right now is extremely difficult mm -hmm. extremely difficult and we could have a step 12 go take a pay raise by going to another district like we want to keep them we've invested in them invested in our community it's a it's a motive to have them stay here with us and so that's where the longevity and everything comes in but it's uh, I, I think it's a good mix of uh, good for the teachers and you know, good for the tax it feels more balanced it it, 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 it really does okay in my Opinion. Right. So. The Tiffany, the answer is they would be, from my notes, they would be paid 
whatever their hourly rate would be calculated based on their per diem if they substituted for an hour. Okay. I'll confirm, confirm that, but that's what I have. Okay. Um, and then also, let's see. I'd like a few more questions. Um, so significant revision of the reduction in force. So it mm -hmm. looks like it's going to be going by not only seniority, but certification committee work and degree status. But yeah, so it's a rubric. So there was really no language before. And if you read the old, it was maybe two sentences. And it really, so this is really allows, it's a point system. And it really allows a deeper conversation about keeping, you know, someone based on merit and seniority and their commitment to the school and how they participate in making it a, a joyous piece of that. So it's really similar to what is going in the other. It matches the riff language that HR is negotiating or supporting the negotiating of in the other SAU 16 pieces. And it's a discussion and, and ended up. Um, the, the Andy's conversations I actually really liked it because it is not arbitrary. It's really like a thoughtful point system to decide who would be cut. Yeah, I mean, it, there's there's two issues when you, if God forbid, we have ever have to go for a riff, um, and there's the the teachers have a legitimate issue that um, administrators are going to go after the highest salaries. Right, because if you got to cut salary, um, the most senior persons likely making the most. That that's a, that's where you're going to go after. Where on the other end, um, uh, seniority, you know, it's not always fair to, especially <laughs> if we're hiring new and great teachers, um, to have to eliminate if we've just hired somebody. Um, and because they just got hired, we got it rid of. So this is really a rubrics that takes into account seniority. Um, there's been anything written up. Yeah. Um, also takes into account how much the teachers evolved, which is how many committees they're on. Not necessarily how many committees, but really what it is have you been on committees if you haven't been on any committees it shows up if you kind of are doing some basic stuff then those points get added to you and so forth it, so our evaluate like so when you're looking at this right you want your most skilled professionals in the building yeah period yeah. that that could look like anything yeah. your skilled professionals need to be the ones teaching our kids yeah. um i think engagement the committee committee call it whatever you want engagement with with the school is yeah. is critical and so this was a, this was done at SAU 16 or with you no Andy negotiated it okay um, but um, it's similar to what is in other collective bargaining agreements and um, because the NEA that he who he was negotiating was very very familiar with it and she has been seeing it I will say that okay. and so it was a thoughtful conversation Sorry for all the questions. Please. Um, no, this, is, this, this is what is this is for. Right. Um, I'm so glad you did this. Um, so the retirement <laughs> benefit here was amended and now states an employee with 10 years of service and 55 years of age may receive a retirement better benefit of 55% of their accumulated sick days up to 100 days. So I feel like that was like potentially a big change unless I missed something in yes, here. That, so I just didn't know what that was about. That was a big change. Um, and what is it that we took out? We took a lot of different pieces yes. out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so we just simplified it, yeah. and again, matching other collective bargaining agreements under it's SAU 60. Yeah, yeah the, so, so it was, um, I don't know if this was in it either. Was it under retirement? I think I might have it's under retirement. I think I might have circled something. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So, yes, this went away as part of this. Okay. 
does it stay in or come out? Never mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, that came out. so what, what used to be is um, there was a retirement stipend equal to $400 for every year of service within the district. Um, so if a teacher had been here for uh, 10 years, it's a, basically it's a $4,000 check. Um, and then the sick days uh, were 15 sick days. Um, and so what we're doing instead is 55% um, of sick days up to 100 days. There's, there's a few reasons why this is beneficial. The main one is if a teacher has a lot of sick days accumulated, it means they've been here. And so you're kind of rewarding the fact that they've been here, they're not using up their sick days, and that sort of thing. Um, and then the offset is, you know, we took out the 400, otherwise um, that's a really big retirement payout. Well, so. you also know, right? So everyone mm -hmm. who has 106 days or whatever, up to 106 days, you're going to be able to budget that much yep. easier than the other one. Yeah. yeah. Much easier. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there was a, um, some of the give and take that, that went along, but um, I, I feel it's a very, it's rewarding, you know, obviously if somebody gets sick, it's, you know, you can't always help that, but it's also um, beneficial to the school for teachers to not use up their sick days all the time. Mm -hmm. so. so they would get 10 years, so the 100 days that's at their per diem rate still, yep. Yes. Yeah, 55%. 55% of, of their per diem rate. Mm -hmm. No, 55 55% of whatever they have in sick days, they get 55% up to 100 sick days. Okay. So 55% of 100 is what they would be paid out on the per diem if they had 100 sick days over time. Okay. And that would be their hourly rate? It would be their their rate per day. Per day. Per day. Per day. So we were paying for 55 days total. After 10 years, and they have to be 55. Yeah. yeah. There was some other things. Uh, the overall sick, sick bank leave, sick leave bank, was uh, increased and modified a little, but in general that doesn't really impact the budget months much because that's shared sick leave within the teachers. It's yeah, donated it's, sick it's time. Donated, donated. <laughs> donated sick time. Um, I think that's kind of the big stuff. Again, does anybody comment? You said it was Is this all going to be on the website or how do we get a hold of this information? Um, that is a very good question. I don't know when we can release the polls. Well, it is my understanding HR does not release um, the full collective bargaining agreement until the town passes, passes. it. Because right now, it's... How do you know if you're going to pass it if you can't get a hold of it? What you see on the warrant article is what you can approve, which is the ex expenditure of funds. So on the warrant article, you're going to see the, the funds across the bottom, and you're going to vote to whether or not you're going to... Um, you agree to expending those funds over the next course of years to fund the public education. Again, if you just have the Warren article, if you don't have the, the hmm. collective bargaining agreement, like, how like can you vote for it? An itemized piece, is that what right. you're looking for? Yeah. Yeah. I am sympathetic to that argument, to, to be blunt. Um, I, I want to ask more questions about that, too. So um, I will keep you updated as you I want get more information. The, so the question I could bring back to Dr. Asbell is, you want to know what you're getting for your money, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can bring that back. I can bring that question back because that was something we talked about. Yeah, I sure. want to see where every dollar is being mm. spent here. It was like three years ago at the deliberative session. Under bereavement, you had, I don't know, four or five days for second cousins, and, and there was nothing there for aunts and uncles. 
I, I think we modified that section we as well. We did fix that as well. By the way. That needs to be redefined a little bit. But how can we vote for something? I'm, you I, couldn't change it at the deliberative but, session, and then but, your people go and you change it afterwards. But just for, from a process standpoint, just remember, what the town is voting for is to expend funds. You're not voting for line items of a collective bargaining agreement that the board chair negotiated in good faith with the teachers here. So, so I just want to make sure that's the, do I understand why you're asking those questions? 100%, where's my money going? Yeah. What am I paying for? Um, I just, from just telling you what I, what have I heard and understood is they don't get to write the collective bargaining agreement. But what I'm hearing you say, we're not asking for that piece. We just want to know what we're investing in when we, when we say yes to $111,000 increase for next year. So I will bring that back and try to get something for the public to look at. Is it, I'll do my best yeah, to well try it's to get like that the, back. The grid you had for the, for the teachers. I, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, let's just say that. Um, there are be, be, before, before agreeing to do anything, I want to make sure I understand why, why information is or not, is not available. Yeah. Is, it, is that fair? Sure. Yeah. So. I, I want to say that there are other district grids that are available. It does become public knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right. When, I don't know when, that. It, I don't when know that. Does it come right, public when? Knowledge. When would be my question? Yeah. I do believe it does become public. Yeah. Once the contract, contract is signed by the teachers. Well, once the contract. I mean, for <laughs> sure, once the contract is. Approved, approved it absolutely it is public it was in there um, i i thought that i thought that it would become public once it's been ratified um i i'm not sure it appears i was wrong so we both thought that and that was the information i got back but i'll i'm so, happy to talk to dr asbel about this again yeah. very happy to so it, i understand anyway, the concern i 100%. Okay. Yeah. I totally understand. So the action from the board tonight would be whether or not you want to put those numbers on the Warren article um, that represent the collective bargaining agreement that Andy negotiated with the Teacher Association of East Kingston. What wording do you need? Um, a motion to put the collective bargaining agreement and um, the numbers in front of you on a right. warrant article for the town right. of East Kingston to vote on. All right. I uh, make a motion to uh, put the collective bargaining, bargaining, bargaining agreement and the proposed 2025 budget as shown um, here in front of us as warrant articles. Um, to propose to the town. All. I uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, so technically, this is just the CBA. This is just the CBA portion, and then we'll do like the full total budget um, we, yeah. after the town this, hearing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right now we just have a we're, the board is going to put the the numbers in the Warren article around the CBA on a on a Warren article for the for the town to vote on and then what is the bottom line for the budget that you want to send to the citizens to vote on? So is there any way to communicate <coughs> the difference be, like the the difference between the default budget and this budget, right? Yes, we will get heavy into that in the deliberative. Wow, okay. there'll be a presentation, public hearing, uh, yeah, public public hearing, hearing. and a presentation. Okay. Yeah, that's the deliberative. Which, um, just to get it out there now, unlike in years past, we're actually going to hold the school deliberative prior to the town deliberative. We're doing it eight in the morning. So, um, I believe that's been posted. It, yep, it's yeah. been posted. Yeah. But yep. um, just. Make sure everybody's got it, spread the word, and so forth. It's early in the morning. <laughs> well, it's not that early. <laughs> but anyway. Sun's up. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
What else do we have here? I just had a quick question <coughs> while you're looking, Andy, about the support staff handbook. Um, I just was curious as to who put it together. Um, or who did the editing, I'm sorry. Which parts? Because it was a team. Oh, it was just a team. Or just yes. who the team was. I'm just, I'm just So business office, business office, East Kingston principal, myself, and Heather Murray, director of HR. Nice. Okay, yeah. Did have, have the support staff looked at it? They have not seen the, the one in your one proposed for next year in your packet, no. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it I was cleaned so. up and stuff. No. I just was just curious. Yeah. Looks pretty good. What, uh, do we have any old business? We I have, definitely want to go into non-public. Yeah. Well, we have, we, I do hope that you make a motion to put the bottom line of the budget on to the, because we did the collective bargain agreement, but you have to propose a budget to go to the public as well. We don't have that final number in a motion yet. So are you going with the proposed budget that we proposed? Oh, yeah, I thought, or, I, I, or, thought I put that all in the or is That's a different warrant, correct? That's, yeah, so there's, there'll be there's two, two warrants. warrants. There'll be two warrants. So it'll be the budget for this amount, which is, you know, which is a 4.19% a increase. So we proposed budget is 3 million five hundred and fifty eight thousand um, so is that my understanding that we don't approve that full amount until after we go to the public hearing because we need to hear you're right what the public Tiffany's correct be like nope Tiffany's right month. I totally that is yeah. right you could not do anything without parent input so yeah. sorry no, I'm ahead of myself that's okay you're right thank you so we don't need the second one we don't okay. we don't good job I know I made the motion last year after the public hearing, so no, you're right. just gonna make sure we do that part first. All right. <laughs> so we're going into okay. I'm gonna go into the public. Is there any other thing on? Do you have any other thing? I'm just I'm beside myself on this bereavement thing. <laughs> that you know, when it was written up, there's no lines and knuckles. Now you're telling me you fixed it afterwards. How can you have a collective bargaining agreement? Well, we didn't fix it afterwards. We fixed it the, in the, the, the proposed budget that you'll get to vote on. The, the, so the, the language is different. The new collective bargaining agreement that we just get through, we just oh, got through. You fixed it for that. Yes. 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 It, yeah. yes. So it's that's what yes. we meant. Because yes. I thought you meant it was fixed right after the no, meeting. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Well, once. Because it made no sense. I, yeah, we cleared it up. We we, we cleared it up. <laughs> yeah, agreed. I, I specifically remember your comments yes, during we did. it, and so yeah. we we All right. yeah. When I say when I say we fixed it, it was in this new uh, okay. contract. It's it's Fine. been modified. I just took it the other way that you know you went back after the meeting and said, no, oh, we, yeah, we, we screwed up here, so let's no. change no, no, no. it. <laughs> we, we can't do that. I wasn't a board member at that time, but yeah, we can't. And do you that. had no feedback from teachers that were not allowed to. To go to a you know get time off for aunts or uncles I bereavement. Random. Well, in it it also says at the principal's discretion. Yeah. Oh, did it? I thought it said something around that, or at least it does now. Is so. I'd like, now. I, I'd like yeah. to see the current one. You could, yeah. If you could ask Dr. Asbel, she could send me that. Well, the current one's right there. What is the? No, no, this oh, is the, the old one. This oh, the old one. one. Yeah. The old one. Oh. What does it have? Does it have for the principal's discretion or? With the principal's approval, other I don't days. recall that at all. All right, let's see. Who's more important? The cousin or the aunt? No, I just named everybody except us. Can I have second, I don't think it was second cousins? I don't, yeah, sorry, was, I don't think it was a value sorry. statement. Was, um, I think it was no, an no, oversight. Sorry. Yeah, no, uh, versus a I value statement. I did the same statement. thing, too, but apparently. Right. Right, you have discretion, Matt, right? Mm -hmm. Right here. Can we change the wording on the retirement stuff? Did you tell me yes on that? I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's changed. Yep. Okay. Well, it doesn't say at the. Oh, I no, think it that does not. I think that might have been what we added this year. It does not say that well. um, Brandon could. It doesn't say discretion. Okay. Was Brandon here for this no. contract? Yeah. No. Nope. I was not part of the negotiations for. Oh no, it was my first year. First year, yeah. yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yep. So that word verbiage yeah. is going to be different. Yeah. Now. Yes. Yes. It did. It, it is different. So. Instead of having a big long list. 
<laughs> and leaving people out. Yeah. I don't remember the exact what it was, but um, your well, the thing your, that got me your, was your, the your, second cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was it was a it was more than one day. Yeah. Your 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 comments were um, taken into new account. Maybe that's the best way to put it. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, do we have anything else? Good. Well, thank you all for being thank here. You. Thank, thank you. you. Right. Right. Yes, Larry's. This is his wife. She's lovely. Um, she'll give you his number and she'll. And that, he'll, he'll be delighted. His to wife's a you. teacher, oh, or an ex-teacher, oh, retired well, teacher, I should say. Yeah, she's a retired yeah, teacher. She did get a kick out of two years teachers. in special ed in Dallas. I have um, seen this in other schools. Yeah, I think they would in, get a huge kick out of it. Just not. Oh, I don't so remember the name. So we're in Derry. Maybe the that's where I am. Oh, that's my I'm um, Pinkerton, so, and I taught in Derry for a long time. So I have, I know, yeah, I have no enough. idea where she was in Derry. Yeah. Well, she was there for 32 years. Well, she just retired a couple, you know, a couple years ago. Months ago. Yeah. But she is inter okay. in interested in substituting <laughs> occasionally. She just, I think she's busy. She just hasn't got she's down to it. She's doing a thing. <coughs> so if you talk to her about it, I would encourage you to come and... Thank and you so much. We get a commission if she decides to. Okay. Yeah, that's that's right. spending public funds. We need a motion for that, I'm sure. I'll be here. We're going to be throwing thank a brick you. through my window. No, nope, no. Nope. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Right. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Thank you both. Thank you. So we need a motion to go into non-public right. roll call vote, and I will take notes. I'd make a motion to go into non-public per RSA 91A3, specifically I in this case. Here's what I found. I'll second. Uh, all in favor, roll call. Andy Harum. Tiffany. Kirsten. And all right, we are out and in public. I'm going to call this meeting to a close at 8.01 p.m. Thank you.